Hey, and welcome back to Supercar Street Racing. I'm so excited to have you guys back today in our brand new 4K production studio. Today, we're gonna take a whole tour of this beautiful brand new facility and tell you what this is gonna mean for the channel because this was built specifically to enhance your experience with supercar street racing. And you can see behind me here, this beautiful editing rig set up and ready to go. So let's take a look at the supercar street racing 4K production studio. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Supercar Street Racing here. You got Brad and today is the day to give the formal studio tour. The studio is 98% done. I just have a couple of lighting things to do. So we are going to start here on the outside. So this is a lean-to building. And yes, the fence is crooked, not the building. Uh, the building is straight 100%. The fence goes on an angle. So there is a narrowing path right here. But starting on the outside here, we have the LG Super Quiet Dual Inverter Air Conditioner System. And that is the same unit that I have in my bedroom it is a 10,000 BTU unit that runs on 110 volt AC and you can see here I did frame around it and cut into the wall to mount the AC then sealed up everything really nice around the air conditioner the wiring inside I will show you when we get inside it is hidden completely um, and that is how the studio is cooled and in the winter time we will just have a small space heater. Now you can also see here on the outside we have LED lighting installed all the way around the perimeter. It puts a nice down light onto the studio. And I also did get gutters installed to move the water away from the door and away from the studio as we had an issue where the concrete was not poured correctly and the water was running towards. So that will fix that. The door eventually will be replaced with a real door. Right now it's just a shed door. Does not close very well. So that will be done in the future. And that is a look at the outside of this nice 150 something or 160 something square foot studio and now we move into the interior guys welcome back to supercar street racing and you are in the supercar street racing 4k production studio and we are going to give you guys a very quick tour of the studio and show you all the amazing features and the studio is 99.9% .9 done and so let's start the tour guys on this side of the studio when you enter you will see the LG dual inverter super quiet air conditioning system this is a 10,000 BTU unit I have a review on my channel I will post a link in the description to this guy it is Wi-Fi controlled with the ThinkQ app it is very awesome, it makes very little noise. You don't hear when the compressor kicks on whatsoever. This is how I'm cooling the studio. I did build it directly into the wall, sealed it really nicely, and then with my um, foam tile skills, I foam tiled all the way around it. And then the wiring actually goes right over here inside the wall and plugs in right there it's very nicely where you can't see it. I didn't want to do it inside the wall, so I did it on the external there. Moving to the right of the AC unit, we've got a wall plate here with a CAT5 or CAT6, whatever you want to call it, um, jack and an HDMI. That CAT6 goes to the switch and the HDMI cable goes up here to the Psyche or Seiki or whatever you want to call it, 32 inch monitor. Now, we have the HDMI down there, so we are capable of 
plugging in anything to this guy and displaying it from either the corner of this desk or whatever you want to do, you can easily just plug right there and there's power conveniently located there as well. So that is the Seiki 32 inch television slash HD monitor with a Fire Stick 4K plugged into it. Now this is the only guy that doesn't have ethernet. Now we can add ethernet. Um, I do have an ethernet adapter for these Fire Sticks so we might do that um, because I want all ethernet not Wi-Fi on my monitors. So yeah, so that is the first thing you see on the left for reference. The door is right there. You walk in and look to your left and the television is right there. Stepping back and looking towards the door, we have the Echo Show 15. You guys are familiar with this from my video review, and I will put a link to that video also in the description. Now this Echo Show 15, I did flush mount completely into the wall. I was able to nicely get that to flush all the way in by adding a cross support inside, and I wired it up inside the wall. You guys all know this, the Echo Show 15 does have the built-in Fire TV and I have a very popular video about how to install Kodi on that. They have disabled a lot of the ability to do that, but we still have the beautiful Echo Show 15 right there. And right below that we have our smart switch for the outdoor lighting and our regular standard switch because all these lights up here, which I will show you next, are smart. Moving up to the left of the Echo Show, we have a wall plate in the actual wall. There are two of them. There's one over there as well. This is going to be for Govi lighting. The um, hexagon panels are going here. I have not purchased them yet, but I will be putting the Govi hexagon lighting right there. And moving back to the front, and obviously I forgot a few foam tiles up there, which I will have to get back to. Uh, moving up to the front, we have a switch right there for uh, Ethernet. It's a gigabit switch and you can see all the active ports on it and I will put a link in the description to that switch. Those Ethernet cables all run through the entire studio and now I'm having an OCD attack because I literally forgot that I didn't finish these tiles and hopefully I have enough to do it. I have like five or six, but anyway, yeah, that part I completely forgot. So there is the ethernet switch guys. I hope you like that switch right there, net gear. And there is a good look at that guy right there. Now you notice I did put the power in the wall as well because right below the net gear switch, we have the Harbinger 12 inch powered studio monitors right here and the input from those goes down to the receiver below. On the left side of the desk here, the editing desk, we have a HP all-in-one computer. Now this one is the one that I have a video on my channel for. I will put a link to this guy in the description. This is the one that we got for free and we refurbished and you can see here it looks absolutely fantastic sitting on the corner of the desk and i have a smart bulb lamp back here with a goby smart bulb so that sits on the left side of the desk with a stool and then we have the fire tv remote and i put labels on the back of all these and that fits right up there nicely so that's the left side of the desk Moving underneath the desk, you can see the editing rig sitting there. Nicely under there, you can see my wiring skills. I did um, all the cable management under the desk. And then you can see here how I did all the stuff inside the wall. We have a dual Cat6 plate there. We've got RCA plates for the front speakers. Those go to the preamp output from the Marantz 1711. We then have our HDMI jacks that feed the monitors. So two HDMI jacks, those go, one goes to the Marantz, the other one goes directly to the back of the editing PC. We then have our 7.2 wall plate 
with all of the wiring running up through some tubing and going to the back of the Marantz NR1711. And then we have power. All I need to do is kind of tie that up a little bit. And yeah, so that should be good for underneath. And then over here, underneath the HP all-in-one, we have a Cat6 jack, we have power, and we have HDMI over there running to that monitor in case anyone wants to monitor their systems. Moving up from the desk, we have our Amazon 4K 50 inch monitor. This editing PC, one via the Marantz receiver, one directly connected. And moving behind them, we have the Govi immersive lighting on the back and all of the wall plates. We do have ethernet, HDMI, and then we have another HDMI plate running to the bottom down here so that anyone can connect their laptop or other device. I know it's hard to see here, but there is an HDMI plate here that says lower plate. It runs down behind here and there will be a small desk here set up for a laptop as soon as I find one. Same with the second TV, there is our monitor. There is a wall plate down there or actually behind it on HDMI running underneath the desk, which is very hard to see because it's dark. And that is the setup for the monitors on the editing rig. Moving to the sound, up above that monitor there, you can clearly see the center channel speaker. I will put a link in the description to these in-wall speakers. I chose to go with square because they're easier to cut the foam around than round. We have the center there. Don't forget our fronts are Harbinger powered monitors here. And we have our side surround there where the foam is coming off that I have to re-glue. And we have our rears there. Those are all the in-wall speakers completing the sound system here for the 7.2 surround sound for the audio rig. Okay, moving to the base part of the sound system, we have the Polk PSW-10, and that is from the house, and I got a brand new one in the house, so I will be showing you guys that at another point when we review it. So that is the sub for the sound system. I wanted to get something that would fit there, but it's not gonna happen, so this one will probably go somewhere like in the corner here or somewhere inconspicuous. I'm not 100% sure yet. It depends on what I do with a desk here. It actually could go way under here and be fine. So we will get to that when we get to it. But that is the sound system base. And then above that we have our refurbished thrift store Mac that may or may not stay in here. Moving to the corner, I originally had planned the subwoofer here, so we have our subwoofer wall plate there with RCA cables and power conveniently located. But for now, it is not possible because this is just too big, so I might move it, the sub underneath the desk over there where it's not in the way. And then moving to the rear, we have a futon with some nice pillows, and that is the rear along with this nice black coffee table that I refurbished myself. That is the rear of the studio for guests to hang out while I edit or to sleep in here, it's possible as well. And that's the rear or sort of the side if you're looking at the door here. You rotate around this way, there's the editing and if you keep going to your right, there is the futon and coffee table. So if you come in the door and you immediately look to your right, we have up here in the corner another wall plate with receptacles for Govi hexagon lighting. We have our 43 inch Amazon TV here, which was not on, but I will show you guys that now. And for whatever reason, it affects both televisions. I don't know why that is the case. They're supposed to be locked to their own guy, but this one is affecting the one behind me which is hilarious. When I pushed the home button, this guy went home too, so. Yeah, so this is a 43 inch 4K Amazon TV monitor, and that has its own built-in, obviously, Fire TV system, and behind it, it is hardwire ethernet to the switch up in the corner right there, and that completes this side of the room. 
If we look down here, we have a CAT6 wall plate so you can hook up here and chill and have wired ethernet. If we look down here, we have CAT6 and HDMI. HDMI feeds the second input to this monitor and then you have power. So this is capable of also displaying up here and that rounds off this side of the room. Guys, moving up to the top of the ceiling, we have the Govi canned recess lighting. It's actually just pucks lighting. It is smart lighting. There are six of these. There are four in the studio part here and there are two behind the televisions up there and they are all smart controlled. Alexa, set the studio switch lighting to blue. Alexa, set the studio switch lighting to 5%. Alexa, set the studio switch lights to red. Guys, there we have the Govi puck lighting and I will have a link in the description to these. They can be synced with the Govi immersive lighting behind the television or they can run independently and I have them set in different groups so these can come on separately and do some backlighting there. And that is rounding off the amazing lighting at the Supercar Street Racing Studio. Guys, that's gonna wrap up a tour of the Supercar Street Racing Studio. I'm so glad you guys decided to join us today and I hope you like the studio and we will see you next time on the channel, hopefully soon with some more exciting things your way.